Hey guys, this is Post Production Pi with SRLounge.com. All right, guys, I have selected Exercise File 1 5, and we're going to go over the HSL, Color, and Black and White panel now. So that panel is number three, I believe, in our lineup. Let's see, 0, 1, 2, 3. So let's access it, let's expand it by hitting Control or Command 3 to drop it down. All right, so now what we have here is we have HSL, which stands for Hue, Saturation, and Luminance, which is what you see right here. Now, hue deals with the actual color tones, like kind of shifting color tones to a different tonal range. Saturation is dealing with the power or the kind of saturation of a specific color. And luminance is dealing with the brightness of a certain color. Now, we can click and adjust these uh, one by one by clicking on each one, if whatever one we want to adjust. Or we can select all to have all three show up at the same time. This is typically how I like to have it displayed because I want to control them all at once. All right, so let's walk through the hues and kind of give you an example of how it works. Basically, we have all these different hues in our image, and however we drag, it's going to affect the tonal range of each of those colors. So, for example, if we want to affect the blues, we would drag the blues left or right. Going to the left is going to make the blues more green, whereas going to the right is going to add more purples into it. We can adjust via the same techniques that we use with all the sliders. We can either drag it with the mouse from side to side, we can hover over it and use the keyboard to go up and down, and shift up and down to go in larger increments, or you can dial in a specific number here by typing it in. I'm going to double click on it just to reset it. And let's go over another way that we can use to adjust our hues. Now, each one of these hue, saturation, and luminous adjustments also has an adjustment point tool. Now, if I select this point tool, it allows me to go anywhere in the photo and pick a specific color. And it's going to adjust those colors however I want going up or down. So if I go over the ocean, and that looks like it's more orange than anything else because it's highlighted uh, as orange, then if I click right here and drag down, it's going to adjust it. Uh, it's going to adjust the hue towards the left side, and if I move it to the right, it's going to adjust the hue towards the right side. Now this is affecting all of the oranges and all of those reds in the image, not just in the area that I'm selecting. So if you look at her face, her face or both their faces are actually being adjusted to a point where it looks really, really bad. So you want to be careful when you're adjusting these hues that you don't go too far in either direction. Now if you want to reset it, we're just going to hold down Alt or Option on a Mac and you're going to hit Reset Hue and it automatically shifts all the hues back to zero. All right, so let's go down to Saturation and let's start with the Saturation Point tool because this is really the most effective way to adjust each of these colors. Now, with the saturation point tool selected, any area that I'm over is going to be highlighted over in my saturation panel over here. So I can see right now I'm really affecting more of the oranges. Over here, we're affecting more blues. Uh, on her shirt, we're affecting more of the reds. Uh, on the undershirt, on her long sleeve shirt, we're affecting more reds and oranges. And when if I click and drag, what it's going to do is allow me to adjust either more saturation by dragging up or less saturation by dragging down. So I would say her face has a little bit too much color in it. So what I'm going to do is click on her face and we're just going to pull out a little bit of the saturation in the face. And you can see how nicely that kind of just tones down the colors in the face only. We're going to go over to the water and we're going to tone, click on the blues and we're going to drag up just to kind of amplify the blues a little bit, get a little more colors. Now you don't want to go too high. If you go too high, you're going to create some uh, postulization effects where you basically start getting these weird grainy kind of artifacts in your colors. So go up just a little bit. It has kind of the same effect as just regular saturation would. So be kind of light-handed with it. I might go to her shirt and I might adjust up the reds in her shirt just a little bit. And notice that when I click on her shirt, it only adjusts the reds because that's pretty much all the color that's in her shirt is reds. When I clicked on her skin, it was adjusting reds as well as oranges. And it was really affecting more of the oranges, but there are some reds in her face. So that's why it's kind of adjusting both. So I'm going to go down just a little bit. I'm going to go this green. There's looks like there's some green or yellow over this tree. We're going to click right here to adjust that up and you can see it's also pulling the orange up because there is a little bit of orange in that tree. So this is a great way of adjusting the different colors and kind of amplifying certain colors in an image while you're kind of pulling down other colors or just leaving them flat uh, in the image. All right, let's go down further to the luminance. Now luminance is dealing with the actual brightness levels of these different colors. So once again, we're going to click on this point selection tool. We're going to go over the image. We can see which area we're affecting. And this time, wherever we click and drag up or down, it's going to darken or brighten the area. If we want to darken it, we move it down. And you can see it darkening that area. If we want to brighten it, we pull it up and it brightens that area. So again, we have specific luminance control over the individual colors in our image. But once again, it is going to affect all of the colors in the image, not just the area that you're selecting. So do be careful as you're selecting it. All right, so I'm going to actually reset these, and uh, we can do so. Let's just reset all of them at once. We're going to hit the entire reset button. 
and let's go back to the top and let's go over the color version of this menu. Now this is the exact same thing as we have in the HSL. The only difference is that it's laid out differently. So at the top we can select different colors or we can see all which is what we see right now. So if we select reds, that's all we see. If we select all, we see all the colors. And then we have an option of adjusting the red hue, the saturation, and the luminance. So it's just a different view of the HSL. We're viewing the HSL by color as opposed to viewing it all together. I find the HSL view much more effective just because I have the adjustment point tools that I can use to adjust specific points in the image rather than having to just kind of guess and, and mix and match which ones I think are which. But if you do prefer that color version of the HSL, you guys have that as well. Just know that these two do the exact same thing. All right, guys, so let's move to the black and white version of this panel. Now, the black and white mix basically allows you to shift luminance levels in because we can't shift any, we can't shift colors or saturation when you're in black and white because there is none. But what we can affect is the actual luminance levels of each of these co colors. So it'll let you kind of dial in a little bit more specific uh, looking of a, of a black and white effect. And we can kind of create certain effects like, you know, uh, infrared effects and kind of like green effects and stuff like that that have more of an emphasis on certain colors and say those out as presets when we do this type of black and white color uh, mixing. So again, the easiest way to do this is just to click on our adjustment point selector. We can go over a certain area, like say her skin maybe be too bright, we can adjust it down a little bit. We can adjust this uh, sky area up, pull this area up, uh, you know, and just adjust each area that we want to to get whatever balance that we need in our black and white mix. Lastly, we also have the auto button, and like every auto button in Lightroom, I'm not a big fan of it, so I don't frequently use the auto button, but you can use it because it is there, and it will try and guess basically the correct black and white mix depending on the photo. And it looks like in this case it didn't do a terrible job. If we just adjust some of the uh, exposure settings and stuff and brighten it up a little bit, it actually would look pretty decent. All right, guys, so we are done with the HSL color and black and white panel. Let's uh, hit Control-3 or Command-3 to shrink that panel, and then let's go on to split toning.